In this video, I'm going to do a tutorial on how to do the Tunisian knit stitch. I have a seven millimeter crochet hook. This is a Tunisian crochet hook with long plastic tubing on the end so that if you want to do a very, very large project, you'll have all this tubing to hold your loops on the hook. I have some worsted weight yarn here. So let's do the slip knot and we'll start making some chain stitches. We don't really need to count how many because this is just a demonstration. So stitch count right now does not matter. Just want to do a, like a small sample. About that, about that big, that's good enough. So what you want to do is on the second chain from the hook, insert your hook, pull up a loop, and do this in each stitch all the way down the row. This is your forward pass in Tunisian crochet. Insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Hold it on the crochet hook. This is why Tunisian is to me like knitting meets crochet and has a baby. It's basically what it is. There we go. Okay, now we've got several loops on our hook. So what we're going to do is the, the return pass. You chain one, and yarn over and chain one, then you yarn over and pull through two, going all the way back down the row. There we go. And now you have this, with all of these lovely vertical bars on it. Now with Tunisian Simple Stitch, you would just insert the hook this way, yarn over, and pull up a loop. That's not what we're doing here. <clears throat> there is the vertical bar on the front and around the back. You can probably see a little bit of it right there. Insert the hook straight through to the back of the work. Yarn over, pull up a loop, and hold it. And then do it again. Pull all the way through to the back of the work. Pull up a loop and hold it. Most of any kind of Tunisian crochet is going to involve exactly this, collecting loops on your hook. So there we go. So now we have all of these loops. Look, and of course on the last one you go through those two loops right there. Right over, pull up a loop. Now, chain one, yarn over, pull through two and do that all the way back down the row. Yarning over and pulling through two loops on the hook. Until you get to the end. And it is starting to curl, as Tunisian stitches are usually inclined to do. That's very typical. So, another row. Just yarn over and pull up loops onto the hook. And of course, when you get to the last, you go through the two loops on the end, yarn over, pull up a loop, chain one, 
and then do your yarn over and pulling through two back down the row. All the way down. Starting to see a little bit of stitch formation there. Yeah, it's curling. It's not a big deal. Through again. Collect some more loops. Going all the way down through the two loops on the end. There we go. Chain one, do the return pass. Always yarning over and pulling through two all the way back down the row. There we go. And it forms little V's sort of on the front of the work. It is a very, very easy stitch to do. And when it's done with a very large crochet hook, um, the curl is, well, the curl's the curl. But it does look very elegant with large stitches. I mean, this is just a seven millimeter crochet hook, which, you know, for worsted weight yarn, where you would typically use a five and a half millimeter hook for regular crochet, yeah, this is fine. Sometimes a great big hook is, is really cool to work with. I think I have seen people use this stitch to make um, Hogwarts scarves. And, you know, you can resist the, um, the curl by adding tassels on the ends. That helps pull the curl out a little bit. But how simple is that? That's the Tunisian mid-stitch. <laughs> 